violence. Stop the violence. Youngstown, Ohio, ceasefire. Call it an event or rally. It's happening Saturday, April 17th, 2021, from 1 p.m. until 4 p.m. at the Boys and Girls Club of Youngstown, Ohio, 2105 Oak Hill Avenue, hosted by Youngstown United as One, bringing unity to the community. Guest speakers, yes. Mayor Tito Jamal Brown, Chief of Police, Carl Davis, Youngstown Police Chaplain, Pastor Lewis Macklin, and MC, Radio Personality, Shop Talk with Mel. Special guests will be those who lost loved ones to gun violence. Refreshments will be served. Also, mask and social distancing will be in effect. All right, we know it's going to be in effect. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You are listening to a Shop Talk with Mel exclusive. I have members of United as One on air with me right now, live for the listening audience. Hey, Mel. Hey, hey, we got Gerald and we have Tanika. Youngstown United as One. For those who are tuning in and aren't from the area, since we are worldwide and are familiar with your mission, can you explain it? What is Youngstown United as One? Youngstown United, we're a small organization, a nonprofit organization that was formed three years ago. And it was a vision for me. Uh, what it came about was I got tired of going to funerals uh, and people from out of town was coming. And it seemed like that was the only time I got to see my friends I haven't seen in a long time. And it was, in a, it was a sad occasion every time we seemed to get together. So my vision was, you know what? We're gonna put something together so people can come together on better terms, not just always at funerals or sad occasions. So that's how I came about with the vision. Then God led me to uh, bring it together. I went to the, I used the internet and I said, I want five men and five women to help me put an organization together to bring uh, the community together as one, all nationalities. So that's how it came about. And it turned out uh, great. So three years later, here we are. Yeah, and y'all doing it. I see you have the lovely Tanika Patterson next to you. How you doing, girlfriend? Hello, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get you on board? Well, I seen we were friends on um, Facebook, and I seen all the great things they were doing. And so I volunteered with Youngstown United for a year to see if I was, you know, like, you know, what would it, if it would be for me because um, I love giving back to the community. Um, I always have helped someone, you know, throughout my life. I've, I've all, I helped so many people, but when I seen how they were helping the homeless and they had the, the Father's Day cookout and things, that made me very interested. So when I volunteer, I really seen hands on how our community is greatly needed of help especially with the poor, the um, homeless and the less fortunate. So that was why I wanted to join the group because I've seen all the qualities, the great qualities they did and things they do for the community. Awesome. Awesome. We love people to help. Yes. <laughs> and and you know, when I first, um, my first encounter with Youngstown United is one I was watching because I'm a watcher. Anybody that knows me, I will observe some things first. I'll stand back and I'm like, okay, let's see what they do. You know how they moving and shaking and how they move. Because that's yeah. it in a nutshell. How are you moving? And you see the same people doing the same thing. Or it's like, okay, well, I have to be with this particular organization in order to reach out. Just kind of like what you were saying, Tanika, you were, you know, you like to help people. But yeah. on my end, I'm looking like, okay, but how come? I can only help people if I'm with that organization or with that, you know, or with those people. And you keep seeing the same faces. And I'm going to be honest with you. I am um, watching Youngstown United as one. I was impressed. The Father's Day, I saw that. I was excited about that. So you probably didn't know I was paying attention, but I was. Okay. <laughs> I usually see things and the part that bothers me most and not with Youngstown United is one, this is other organizations over the time and they'll do good or they'll give coats. 
And this is, you probably seen this one too, because it was all on Facebook. So if you're giving to the needy, if I'm in need, I don't want to be on Facebook getting a coat. You know what I mean? So you have yeah. pictures, you know, they're posting of them doing doing a little good in the neighborhood. Shout out to you, Frankie Half Faker. Logan, <laughs> 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 you know? Um, but I just felt like, why do we have to show everything that we're doing if we're actually doing good or is it for the accolades? So that's what made me say, okay, uh, I'm, I'm feeling Youngstown United as one because it's like, this is what we're having. And then, and I see that you'll share the people that donated, but you don't exploit there. There's the term I'm looking for. Exploit the people of need. It's like, okay, we did it. It's done. It's over. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. Great. You know, you you hear this is going on and then you hear uh, you, I hear other people say it was a great turnout and blah, 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 blah. You know, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And or I'll hear a thank you from you guys. That's it. I don't see the middle part. And we know that even when we do certain things or if we're speaking somewhere, what's important is the beginning and the end. Absolutely. Yes. I was actually yes. saying it's the beginning and the end. So showing that middle part, and if you know me, I'm trying to tell y'all something, people out there that be putting their, everything on there, handing out codes, like, look at me. This is what That's not important. What's important mm -hmm. that you did the mission and the goal, and the goal was- It comes, it comes from the heart. Right. It comes from the heart. Absolutely. It's from the and sometimes, yeah. Mel, sometimes, Mel, um, what we do, like it was a cookout we had down for the homeless down at the number one fire station, where I got to tip my hat off the- a fire chief, very friendly. Ever when I first when we first had it down there, uh, okay, asked very friendly. That parking lot next to you guys, you want to have a cookout for the homeless? Without hesitation, he was like, "No problem, girl. No problem. What do you need? We got tables there. You want to use our kitchen? I mean, he was. It was just amazing how he just really opened up everything for us. And I just said, we just need the space here. Might, we may need a couple tables. But here's another thing to answer some of uh, your question as well. I, I film stuff, but I ask people, I, I, you know, some of them be like, no, I don't care. You can show me, hey, I got a coat or this and that. Some of them don't mind. This one guy came up to me and tapped me on the back and he said, hey, brother, you don't mind. I'll, can I be on your camera? I just want to give y'all a shout out because he don't know if he had ate at all today. He said, I, I'm going to just like, tell people what y'all doing is great. And I was like, they're going to set these up. <laughs> you know what now I mean? That's, now that's a, test, that's a testimony versus yes absolutely what, what you know, i see froze, so. bro. it froze mel i mean as long as you oh, can hear that's all right we're gonna be all right okay we yeah okay we good hear. but yeah bro. okay we good now but yeah okay. he, he was really like he was like brother I'm, look just show the camera around you know the people's like no nah, i don't mind you know i go i go over the head or to the side they was like no nah, hey this is a great thing people need to know what you're doing yeah. you know like this is not doing i'm because i was kind of skeptical exactly what you're saying but they was like, hey, they don't mind. This, this is good. This is good for the neighborhood. You need to let people know that because of the next time you do something, they know what to look forward to, what you have. The guy was like, you got a nice spread of food. You're giving uh, toys and, I mean, um, school supplies to the kids. They need to know this. Don't hide it. They was like that. So, uh, and, 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 here, and, and, I, and I get that, too. I get that, too. And that's a testimony. Absolutely. Yes, yes, Absolutely. Testimony. So you have your difference with your testimony and then the backs of people or the sides of people. And it's like, OK, did, did you get permission? That's the, you yeah, know, that's, that's, right. that, that's right. the main exactly. thing. That's I mean, the difference, right? right? It's yeah. the difference, right? Now. Yeah. Now you have, especially with COVID. So you have like with COVID, everybody's going through everybody. And, and I'm going to tell you one thing that I was really pleased with, even though it's a, you know, a global pandemic, what I was pleased with uh -huh. was to see how everyone were, was uniting. It was like your neighbor, yes. people that you didn't even communicate yes. with on a regular. It was like, oh, then you start saying, hi, are you okay? Hey, you don't feel good? I'm gonna go into the grocery store. Do you need something? It, it was just right. amazing yes. to say and to see everybody going back like, oh, wait, this, this is, we did used to speak. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. People coming together, people helping people. People helping people. So yes. I'm glad, I, honestly, some people feel like, yeah, I'm happy it did happen. And it gave us the opportunity to sit down 
God says stop. And nobody, everybody just, yep, everybody just stop. It was like nobody's allowed outside. And then you were able to look. You were able to reevaluate yourself if you needed absolutely. to. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Evaluate your, yeah, no, evaluate your situation. Like, okay, is this where I want to be? You were able to look and say, hey, is there something that I want to do? Look at all the entrepreneurs that realized, you know, they came out of look, came out of the quarantine. They're like, oh, I can do this. <laughs> yes. Amen. Yes, that's, well, so that's so true. That's so true. That was well said. That's you said because I, I feel, you know what? I looked at my bank account. I saved money. I was like, you know, during the pandemic, you couldn't go nowhere. It's like, hey, you know, <laughs> restaurants. I was like, well, you know, this ain't that bad. You know, right. you know I'm not saying I feel right. bad for the people who got really sick or lost their life. The family members, don't get me wrong on that. But right. it, it yeah. made me look at myself more. Even uh, like you said, you sit down, I read the Bible more. and say, you know what? I'm not missing the bars. I, I didn't go like that anyway. It's time to sit my butt down anyway, you know, just to reevaluate yourself. And it, it re also revealed a lot of things as well in the world. Yes. It revealed a lot of things. And you know what? And that's what I said. We're going to move on. We're going to go to that real quick. But since you did bring up people that lost loved ones, yes, you know, praying for the families that did lose people from COVID. Yes. I don't know, and y'all already know how I operate. I got to put this information out there. There is monies out there, FEMA. If you lost someone from COVID, yeah, I and that. Of you paid, yeah, you know, for the services, just put your paperwork in mm -hmm. and at least recoup some of it. I mean, you can't bring the person yeah. back, but maybe you could do a little good in the neighborhood with that monies. You know, yes, so yes. and I want to say it's like nine thousand or something like that. It might not be much, but it is something. Something well, to be helps. Yeah, it, helps. Yeah, yeah. it helps. Yes. Now, what you were saying, Daryl? Yes, it made us see things. I'm telling you, we already know that everything that was going on—the systemic racism, the um, police killing our fathers—that's what. And I, I've said this from day one. When you know, it's like, okay, there's no black fathers in the home. When you, so we'll uh, piggyback off of your Father's Day cookout. That was amazing to me. Yeah. Um, it's like. And I've always said, I was like, well, you're killing them. Like, stop. You know what I'm saying? Give me a break. Yep. And honestly, you know, we know that this has been going on and we hear those names, the Mike Brown, and then it's like, okay, but business as usual. And it's like, yeah, you remember it, but then they're like, oh, okay. And we know that as black people, we are forgiving people. We, oh, are, yeah. a, we yeah. are a forgiving people. Yeah. And it's like, okay. And then you go and you kill the next one. And then you kill the next one, you kill the next one. But guess what? We all had to sit down with George yes. Floyd. And everybody watched it. Black, yes. white, every yes. nationality, the whole world was able to look at this and see what Absolutely. we have been saying for what all for along, all along, yes. right. right? Just so like this, a lot being revealed during this. It's event. a lot. They're like, "Oh, George Floyd, this is a wake up call." Excuse me, it was no, a wake up it. call. Yes. Sixteen, nineteen. Y'all just kept hitting yes. snooze. Yes. Okay, yes. this is going on. So yes. when. Everybody was able to watch it. It was like, whoa. And then seeing, you know, the people unite and right. from all nationalities coming together. And it's like, okay. And then you also, I was able, let me tell you my revelation. That's why I ain't mad at 45 for being in office. Because guess what? When 45 was in office, it was a revelation of how you really feel. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, he brought it out. He yes, he it did. Out. It was like, thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank, you know what I'm saying? Like, here we go. And you looking like, yep. wait a minute. And for my avid spade players out there, you know, us, them, you know how we play spades. Right, right. We can sit down, we can break bread together, we can laugh, we can play together. But guess what? I know if we got to be a game, it's us against them. Yep. And it's yeah. us, and vice versa, not even just black with whites, whites with black, the same thing. It's like, oh, yeah, we can all commune and have a good old time. Yep. But yeah. deep down the side, we know what it is. So when people say that, um, you know, they're like, oh, Black Lives Matter. Then they're like, oh, all lives matter. Okay, there would not be a need for Black Lives Matter if all lives truly matter. Absolutely. That's true. Absolutely. You know, and I just feel like, you know, when people say that, it's like, do you really understand? We've been saying this the whole time. And I have a good friend who's white. And that's my girl, too. And she was like, mm -hmm. racist? She was like, no, man, it's not. This was this was probably in like maybe 15 years ago. She was like, racism, mm -hmm. that's a day of the old. I said, no, it's not. I said, let me tell you something. I am a mother of a black son. 
And, you know, he was my first. And I remember my husband there. They thought I was crying because I was happy. It was over. <laughs> but, yes, word, man. <laughs> but they were thinking that I was crying because I had a child, but I knew he was a black boy. And I knew the challenges. And it shouldn't even be those challenges. Um, you shouldn't have those thoughts when you give birth to a son. It shouldn't be those, those challenges shouldn't be, that thought shouldn't be there, you should be happy. And I immediately went into, oh boy, and I knew the challenges he was gonna have just being birthed. Yes. So I commend your organization. Thank you. Thank you. I, I commend it because it's like, this is what we need. And seeing positivity and it's like, okay, let's build up. And even when you see, you know, you, people in the community speaking, even with the, like the political candidate, I don't really deal with politics. <laughs> and I, I don't, I'd be like, hey, whatever. But, but I do exercise my right to vote. <laughs> but if you listen, and I, and I can't really listen to that too much because all I hear, and so you guys are, on the opposition of let's bring up. But if you yes. listen to what's saying, they're talking about the issues. And yes, you do want to talk about the issues, but what mm -hmm. about the good in the area? Absolutely. And, and you keep hearing how this is this way, this is that way, this is that way. And then you got people that moved out of town, Youngstown still ain't doing it. This, you ain't even here. Mm -hmm. How do you know? How do you know? And then somebody, they had a great idea. They said, oh, they need to bring a Chick-fil-A into the town, right? They don't, they don't live here. I said, oh, there is one. So, <laughs> you know, like, um, right, I'm right. you to do the research before you get to talking about what's going on in here. And I'm mm -hmm. tired of hearing all the negativity and they keep focusing on the negativity. And we know that they, it takes three positives to get rid of one negative. But if you keep pounding negativity and tell me, why do I even want to be in this community? Right. What is there to do? You know right. what I mean? And, you know, like I said, even in, you know, with the politics, all I heard yeah. before was the problems, the problems, the problems. I need you to build me up. Yes. Yeah, I need you to build me up and tell me the good and what program you're going to put into place or what's exciting to come. If I vote for you, tell me what I have to look forward to. Right. You yeah, know? right. Man. Absolutely. So. That's where my issue is, and that's why I like you, Youngstown United as one. Now, you guys have a program coming up, Stop the Violence, and I keep focusing on the violence. Now, I'm going to touch base on that really fast. Okay. Okay. We know that there's violence everywhere. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. You, hometown, Youngstown, Ohio, but the people that know me, I lived in California, San Diego. Oh, Okay. Same thing. Mm -hmm. The difference is, I don't know the people. You see? And here, you know, it's a smaller town, you know, smaller population. Oh. And you know those, you know, you see those, you'd be like, oh, that's so-and-so's child. That's so-and-so's child. That's why mm -hmm. you're talking about community. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Because somewhere along the line, it's like, okay, it's connected. So you guys have this That's program, true. Stop the Violence. <laughs> yes, Stop the Violence event rally. Mm -hmm. I love that you chose the word event. Absolutely. Yes. I had to put that with that together, though. Some people I interpreted love... it the wrong way, though. Yes. But what it I... is, what you were just oh, speaking right. on, man, what you were just saying about your California, they don't realize Youngstown, Ohio, Youngstown is a crack in the map. We're a small, we're a small town with a big city problem. That's it. It's happening everywhere, though. But you know, uh, we still have to speak up and try to. Uh, it's hard to stop. It's just try to slow it down. So these young youths out here today, they just got to think twice. We just got to put something on their mind. We got to get, like you said, bring the positivity back into Youngstown. It's a lot of things we can be doing here, but yeah. you got to tell people. I mean. You got to put it into the city again. I mean, like I went by Wick Park uh, the other day and I was I, I filmed it and just said, look at this. Used to be a tennis court. It's just sitting there. Bring it back to life. Crandall Park. Right. Yeah, all the Landscape that mode, right? 
I mean, the people who say, like you were saying, are oh, you still in Youngstown? I mean, I, I tell them, would you run away from it? You running away from it? I said, hey, it's still stuff here to do. Yeah, I, wish they were, I wish they would have reinvented Adora Park because we had it going on with it's that. Stuff, you yeah. know, we, everything kind of yeah. went down. I hate to say it went down. Everybody know because of the meals. But still, yeah. we can bring it up. I yeah. mean, we have we people here. Up. Uh, uh, Youngstown got a lot of talented people too, though. Yes. They really do. I 110% agree with you. And here's what's interesting you got people that are sleeping on Youngstown. But anytime President Obama says Youngstown, they're in the White House saying Youngstown, Ohio. They know about Youngstown. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, really. They know about we Youngstown. We're great, really. We're great <laughs> if we just, you know, fulfill what. You know, our our keep it in the spirit. You bring it out. You gotta yeah, bring that out. You gotta bring it out. Yeah. 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 My words. <laughs> you have the people <laughs> I met someone probably I was out of town Easter weekend and I told the lady where I was from. And this lady was like, Oh, the last thing I heard of Youngstown, this is gonna take it back. <laughs> she said, <laughs> she, she she older lady, 70s. She said, Youngstown, I ain't heard that in a long time. The last time I heard of Youngstown is um, one of my friends, he, we was 15 years old, so she, late 70s. She said, That's he went back, down there. Were you ready? Listen, he went down there for, she was like, and now I'm, I'm just chilling, you know, I'm listening. She was like, yeah, Youngstown, Ohio, they had a pimp school. You know I sat up. <laughs> oh, what? Pimp right, school. that's me. I that's said a pimp school. Right. She was like, she said, yeah, Youngstown, Ohio. I remember my friend, he was 15. He said he was going to be a pimp. He was going to Youngstown to a pimp school. So I, <laughs> <laughs> and then it's told, right, yeah. right, right. So I said, <laughs> okay. So it took it back to Youngstown was bumping back in the day. And we all know about that, you know, if you don't read about it. Yeah. You know? it, it was like, yeah, it's some lady down there. And she teach you how to be a pimp. He came back with seven. I said, oh, no, I'm, I'm out of town. I'm not even from here. I thought that was the funniest thing ever. So and you hear it's like, okay, Youngstown, Youngstown. So you got the steel mills. You got pimp stools. <laughs> you know, the mafia. You know, you have all of that. That's yeah. what they was calling it. The yeah, they was calling it Little Chicago. And here's yep. the thing I want to say, as far as like the young people killing each other, like back in the day, it was who had an issue. And if you owe, and let's keep it 100, you know, if you were in the game, you knew. Being in the game, to me, when you're in the game, in the drug game I'm talking about, there's a job description. Either you're going to end up in jail mm -hmm. or dead. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, back in the day, in jail, dead, or family members. I'm not putting no ideas out here. I don't want to do, I'm not putting any ideas out here, but this is what I want to say to my young people. You're you're telling the truth. You know, if, if somebody owes you money, you'll never get it back killing them. It's over. That's never. right. That's right. You know, and, and I'm sitting and I'm looking like, this is what? crazy. What? Crazy. What, sense, what sense does it make? Make it make sense. It don't you know, make I no mean, sense. I mean, I look at it like this. Somebody owe me just fifty dollars. Maybe he brought all the time. Owe me fifty dollars. I said, you know what? He don't want to pay. Well, I just got rid of a headache for fifty dollars. I came out. The Absolutely. That's how I look at it. I just Absolutely. got rid of the problem. I came out cheap. You know what? Came out. Got rid of them. Fifty dollars. Absolutely. Now, now I want to talk. I, I want to ask you a question. Nice looking older man now. Who you talking about? Oh, 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 wait, I'm not, you're not older, right? <laughs> okay, you're not older, huh? Don't date you. But I, I see where you have young guys who are killing each other over women. Uh -huh. What would you say to the young man who feel as though, like, okay, this was my girl, and now you're there? And I, I know I you could him, say take a life, but go ahead. I, I was just telling him he would have to take the heartbreak. I mean, just to walk away from it, uh, it's more the old saying, it's more fish in the sea. It's not work taking a life or even arguing. But I know they used to fight over them. That, that's not even working. If she's going to be, you're going to say you kill a person. You locked up and she's with somebody else. It's not even worth it. Take the heartbreak, my man. That's a part of life. You're going to go through the mob school. That's not so the is the thing. He still ain't going to have her. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, um, 
the ceasefire that you guys, the event rally that you guys are having on this upcoming weekend, mm-hmm. um, and I, you, I'm out here like Uncle DeWine, social <laughs> distancing, you still doing it, you know what I mean? And mass is heavily enforced. When you right. decided, when you all decided as a collective group to have this rally, what was the straw that broke the camel's back that said, hey, we need to do this now? Uh, uh, you know what? I said, you know what? The weather's starting to break. I said, it's got, we got to do this before summer hit. I said, yeah, that was it right there. I said, because it was like the last killing or shooting we had. And I said, it ain't even, it ain't even, it ain't even summertime yet. And something about the heat and the hot weather, I said, we got to do this now. We got to get a heads up and bring the community together. And we got to just uh, let our voices and as uh, far as our shirts, speaks for us when we're out there and it has to be done now before the summer because it, it, it's really out of hand now so that's what did it, knowing the weather was coming hot weather okay so tanika what would be the overall purpose what what do you hope to achieve by having this rally well i hope to i hope for the community to come together and make a solution for this, you know, come up with something to help the youth and bring positive um, out of it. Energy. Yeah, some positivity out of it. I saw where, which is really good. Let, let me tell y'all, you know, for the listening audience, um, a little bit about the program, because I read, you know, the itinerary, and I thought it was really good with the um, question and answer segment that you had in there so it's like you guys are looking for answers not someone just standing there speaking even though there's guest speakers not somebody just mm-hmm. telling you okay here we hear this again we hear this again we hear okay da 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 you're mm-hmm. saying and the the qa portion i love that so if somebody has solutions everybody just let me let me say this some people tend to think that you have to have a degree to speak or, you know, or to be validated. People can, you can learn something from everyone. And I am going to be honest with you. I am more apt to receive from the bum on the street than somebody who got a doctorate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to know your story. Yes. Right. And most of those bums on the street are college graduates oh they got a story they got a story though yeah intelligent listen when you say when you guys were feeding people under the bridge it was people that i went to school with uh one girl me and her tight as all get out Mm -hmm. tight as all she she's there she preferred to be there and i'm like well i said well, let's shop talk it, you know? And she was like, uh-uh. <laughs> so I, was like, I was like, come on, girl, let's shop talk about it. She was like, uh, and I ain't fooling with you. You the same, you know? And I said, <laughs> I, I said, I want to know. The people want to know, you know, what's really going on. So she did. She wouldn't come on air with me, but she did share with me. She was like, and you can share. I ain't going to say her name, though. But she has options to not be there. But all the stresses and the judgment that's out there, it's like, whoa, wait a second. She said, no. She said, I'm stress-free. I don't have an address when nobody be bothering me. Um, and I said, well, y- me. I'm like, well, how you go to the bathroom? You know, that, that's my main concern. Wait a second. Now, that sounds good, but wait, where are we going to the bathroom at? You know? <laughs> And she was saying like different places that are open. And like you were saying, uh, the firehouse, a so shout out to you, um, Chief. Very funny, Chief. Very, very funny. funny. Yes. Shout out to you. You know, let's give it to him. Absolutely. Uh, for allowing, you know, you guys to feed them. She said, uh, we get hot meals. She said, I was like, well, how you warm it up? You know, I'm, I'm inside. So I'm like, I don't like camping. So that wasn't going to work for me. But she yeah. shared that. And she shared something that was really interesting because she got out there on the drug scene a little bit. And what she shared with me is how, air quotes I'm using, church people judged her for coming in. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the thing. And I'm like, 
just keep praying. So we had the conversation. I was like, just keep praying. I said, but here's the thing that's really interesting. And I said, and I feel you because usually we as church people, because she's church, she go church too, you know, mm-hmm. what she did, but she refused to go in. And she said to me, she didn't want to be a hypocrite. That was a problem for me. What's the the problem, it, it was a problem for me. And I told her, I said, a hypocrite. I said, why? Because you feel as though that you know you're doing wrong. Every time that we pray as church people, we pray when we are in need. If you are in your habit, if you are in your addiction, that's the time you pray. Don't feel like a hypocrite because you snort. See, that's what I was saying. The devil ejected those thoughts into her head to keep her away from the church. That's how that goes. He keeps trying to keep them away from the church. He should have went in. She knows she has a problem. And another thing about the church is they do look at them. That, see, God, he, he wants those people to come in. He wants the drug addicts, the drug dealers, all the people in the street, people to come in the church, not just the people in church. He wants to get them, people to come into the church. Yeah. But when they do come into the church, they get those stares and looks, and it makes them feel uncomfortable, then they don't come back to the church. And that's a yeah. terrible thing. Though. Yeah. And that is a terrible thing. And when we were talking and I was like, just pray. I was like, we pray like you be on your sick bed. You like, Lord, Jesus, help me. Lord, Jesus, help me. Okay. Yeah. So somebody that's an addict, don't look at them as being a hypocrite because wow. they're doing it. That's the time to pray. That's the time that you need him most. Go yes. ahead. You were sad, girl. If you have a street walker, don't close your door. Or, Come on in. Right. This is, yeah. this is the time that you need to hear. And it's sad because you have those uh, people to be like, that's my seat. I sit here. Honey, your seat should be reserved. You've been coming to the church how long? For 30 years? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Your seat, you good. Give your seat up to somebody that need it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I think we need to be more welcoming, but I told, and, and this is that's what she shared with me that I want to put. And this is my friend under the bridge. She said, she talked about the hypocrisy. Oh, then she said, which I'm was sorry. really good. That's all right, we're good. Then she said that so people, so she said people get on her nerves because they only pray to God when they need something instead of praying. Yeah, to go get the charger because my bad. That's okay. Okay. To be um, thankful. How come we don't pray to God to just to say, Thank you, Lord, for this day. We always pray for the need. Yes. And so she said she was done. That's why she was like, I'm done with everything. She don't want the government to know where she stay at. Don't tell nobody where I live at. I'm under the bridge and I'm fine and I'm okay up, up, up under there. But that's a conscious choice. Now, I want to go with um, with you, you guys having the special guests being people who have lost yes. loved ones. Yes. Yes. So, so, so is, is, um, is it hearing their story after the funeral, how their life has been impacted after the funeral? Yes. Or I think it's going to be all of everything that has happened, like the just losing the their their loved one and how it has really affected them, you yes. know, afterwards. And uh, we have some really great women that's going to give their story. And I think the community and everyone needs to hear it because this is what happens, you know, after a shooting, a killing, and you're not just affecting that that person, you affect, you're affecting the whole community now because you know, it's like killing after killing after killing. Every time I open Facebook or turn on the news, I see somebody has been shot or the shooting here and there. And it's like, when did this stop? Mm-hmm. I have four signs. I have four adult signs. And I pray without ceasing every day that they are covered, you know, because it's, it's bad out here. Okay, we're going to go to a commercial break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. You're listening to Shop Talk with Mail Exclusive. Okay. okay. All right. Call it an event or a rally. It's happening Saturday, April 7th. 1 p.m. until 4 p.m. At the Boys and Girls Club of Youngstown. That's a shame. I told you my God. Oh, my God. Youngstown. 
United as one, bringing unity to the community. Guest speakers, Mayor Tito, Jamel Brown, Chief of Police, Carl Davis, Youngstown Police Chaplain, Pastor Lewis Macklin, and MC, radio personality, Church Talk with Bell. Special guests will be those who lost loved ones to gun violence. Refreshments will be served. Also, masks and Mind you, sometimes it's still so weird. in effect. All right. <laughs> okay. So that is Stop the Violence, Youngstown, Ohio, Cease Fire Event and Rally. So it's not going to be all just gloom and doom. It's no, not it's gloom and doom. This is about uplifting our community. That's what we have to start. We have to uplift it, uplift our community and give people a reason to live and a reason Absolutely. to want. Um, it's Saturday. It's happening April 17th. This upcoming weekend from 1 to 4 p.m. And your girl is on the doggone roster. So if I'm on the <laughs> roster, listen, and y'all ready to go on the road. If I'm on the roster, yes, it's going down and we start promptly. Yeah. I am the prompter. I, I, I listen, you know, you have your glitches and things that come into play, but uh, ain't nobody playing. Ain't nobody yeah, playing. And we <laughs> thank you. We appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Listen, I, I begin, let me tell you something. I went to a wedding. These people told me this wedding started at, what was it, 3 o'clock. Now, y'all planned it. Y'all said 3 o'clock was a good time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I have the invitation. You said 3 o'clock was a good time for you to get married. I come there at 3 o'clock, here at 4 o'clock, here at 5 o'clock. Uh, listen, <laughs> now, <laughs> I, now, if I planned the time, then I can understand why we late. But I just mm -hmm. can't understand when people have different events. And I said a wedding because yeah. that's supposed to be a special day. But if you have an event, you plan the time. So you said this is a good time. Don't come mm -hmm. rolling up in here with no juices or nothing. This started one o'clock mm -hmm. coming at two o'clock. Talking about refreshments. This stuff needs to be set. Absolutely. And ready to go. Because time yes. is the one thing that we cannot get back. That's Got right. That right. That's right. And usually you know, like our events, the events we do have, they start right yeah. outside. Yes, that's, that's, how right. it, that's how I go. It should be. That's yeah. why I'm gonna make sure. And uh, before the event, the next couple of days, I'm gonna be one o'clock. I mean, one o'clock, not one thirty, not right. two o'clock. Though we just gonna start. We over there. Yeah, we starting at one o'clock though. But I advise you to be there. It's gonna be. Uh, you might miss something. Like you said, we got the mothers who lost loved ones gonna speak. We got a raffle for the uh, the youths with three uh, brand new ten speeds. A free raffle. A free right. raffle. And a 50 inch TV for the adults. And um, so we try to let the uh, youths know we do care about them. It ain't just all talk. So wait a minute. Y'all got a raffle. <laughs> you know, yeah. I like a good raffle. I don't win that, <laughs> but I like a good raffle. Is yeah, it, do yeah. y'all have a 50 50 raffle too? No, there's everything for it. No, what we doing, we just got, um, it's going to be two separate tickets one's for the youths and one for the adults. The adults is a 50 inch TV. And this uh, lady from um, a former uh, lady, Ruby Dickerson, formerly okay. of Youngstown, she got, she got, um, sent in $100 that she wants us to donate to. So that's what's going to be a $100 donation to the adults and a 50-inch TV. We got the three uh, brand new bikes we got from Walmart. It was some nice bikes, too. I was like, I need to be on you remember stuff. bikes was the bomb? Oh, man. I don't, you don't even see that no more. I don't. I don't, I don't see yeah. kids playing kickball. Streets or not to name them games. That's it. Big bag of Doritos in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I see. Hot Cheetos, hot Cheetos, get it right. <laughs> <laughs> them hot chips. Hey, like, they got got orange. Hey, hey, Mel, they got orange fingers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get them. I mean, so it, that is awesome. That yeah, is, so I, I'm excited. I'm excited yeah, about yeah. the excitement. Our children welcome. Yes. 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 Okay. Under good supervision, not running around little kids. I mean, they're under good supervision, yes. I mean, we're talking, we're taking, um, uh, we really want to, uh, like, uh, elementary, uh, sixth grade, fifth grade, is what, you're 11, 12 years old? Because that's when they really start not right. noticing, right. you know what I mean? When that right. age up, they need to get this message. That's when I was, uh, when I talked to, um, I think, Mo, when I was on the Mo race show, or somebody okay. was talking, I was telling them about the, no, that was the interview with, uh, Stan Boney. That's what I was telling them. Uh, I think the solution is some of them, uh, 
the teachers, they need to really instill that. Maybe they are, but in the adults too, the parents, you got to get them at the young age, elementary school, while their heads are still clear. Yes. Once they get like coming out of like sixth grade, going into junior high, there's a peer pressure. They just want to smoke a cigarette. But they started so young now. So you really got to start at the <laughs> elementary school. They are. Mm -hmm. They are starting young. They're starting, let me tell you. <laughs> 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 I, I, I just sitting there like, wait, wait, what, huh? I thank God for the position that I'm in. Um, mm -hmm. Some people don't know, I work in the school as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And corrections nurse, over 20 years. And other, I, I work everywhere, okay? I work where, I, where God has me placed. There you and go. I tell you how good this is and how good God is. My testimony real quick. Young man, when you say they start young, so elementary, young man comes to me and he Is says, elementary school? Is elementary? Elementary. Okay. elementary. He comes and he asked me for toothpaste. So I said, I said, toothpaste. I said, I don't have any toothpaste. I said, but I do have, I got some peppermints, you know, and I'm like, oh, this is young boy. You know, I said, Nurse Rose got you. He got some, some peppermints, you know. And so he, but he didn't ask me for a toothbrush. Then another guy, another guy comes in, older, six, so sixth grade, seventh grade. So this is like K through eight, okay? He was like, Do you have some? Um, he's like, I need some toothpaste. You have some toothpaste? Let me tell you, like I said, God positions me to work in certain places for a reason. Yeah. So now we click. Bing. Now, this was a thing back in like 2014. Toothpasting. Have you ever heard of toothpasting? Never heard of it. No. I'm about to tell you about toothpaste. Toothpasting. Toothpaste. Toothpasting is where they take toothpaste oh, and they rub it on the areolas, <laughs> their nipples, around their nipples. It gives what? you. They get high off of it. Um, I think, I, um, what is it? Titanium dioxide. Something in the toothpaste gives really? you that effect, so you will come off like you're intoxicated. Wow. This is what's happening now again. So I thought that was oh, over. So, so if you hear pasting or you hear your little people or you saying that, what happened to all the toothpaste? Boy, they brushing their teeth. You're just excited. You know, you're like, all right, I'm talking good. I say, listen. So he's right about getting them at the right wow. age. So I go back and I said, listen, I need to tell the principal, this is what's going on. We need to send out a newsletter letter. Right. So she did just that, sent it out. So now the parents are aware because who in the world, first of all, who in the world thought about this? But since you're doing the homeschooling, right, right. you're on the internet. Mm -hmm. And it's like, mm -hmm. this person's talking to this person. Wait, we can do what? But I was so grateful that I happened to be the person that was there that they both asked for toothpaste. But he didn't want the mints. See, that's what made me, wait. Yeah, you why want not? Yeah. No toothbrush. Like, <laughs> yeah, no toothbrush. Like, First, I was like, oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> then the second one come. Two days later, it took two days. I was like, mm, this, I said, this can't be it. Let mm -hmm. me put this out there. Not that I want to accuse you of this, but it's mighty interesting. Right. Yes. That's what you want. And me working where I work at, I happened to ask some other people. And they were like, girl, you know, they was like, oh, yeah. I said, <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm on it. You know what I mean? But that keeps me informed. Right. Yes. Right. That keeps so me informed. Look, look I know what yeah. to look for certain, you know, right. behaviors. And it's like, wait a second. That's why I look, it's so important. The Im impact is important. Absolutely. And it's like, why do you work where you work? And I got that, I got that question a lot. Why do you work where you work? Even when I talk to the young men, because I work in corrections with men. And the younger ones will ask me that. And I said, you know what? I said, I'm here for a reason. And mm -hmm. just because your physical is incarcerated does not mean that your mental is. So don't give up. Yes. Yes. There you go. Yeah. And even talking to people now when they ask, well, what's going on out there? This was last year, 2020. It was like, well, what you doing out there, Nurse Ross? I said, the same thing you're doing. Sit down. We ain't allowed to go nowhere. This is my <laughs> highlight. Coming to work. <laughs> As an essential worker, you know? So mm -hmm. we're all doing the same exact thing. It's what are you going to do with your time since we yeah. can't get that back? Right. So right. 
I love uh -huh. your I love your organization, mm -hmm. Youngstown United as one. And it's the impact that you guys are giving to the community and the effect that you're having on the community. Everyone is rallying around you guys. I hear nothing but good things with Youngstown United as one. How do we get involved? And I would like for you, either one of you to take that uh, question. How do you get involved if you want to join in to Youngstown United as one or donate? Because some people are like, I don't have the time, but I want to donate. How right. do we do that? Uh, what you do is get in uh, contact with either me, Laura, or Tanika, or my email address is Daryl Jones, 1964 at iCloud.com. We'll sit down and talk if you want to join or even volunteer. Right now, at this moment, we're not taking any members right now, but we're taking volunteers right now. Because we're right okay. now, the chemistry we got is okay right now because uh, we're, we're, we're trying to. You you have have get that, it's like a basketball team. You got that chemistry right now. It's not, we, we tell them don't Your take it home. personal. Don't take it personal. Right now, we just we just taking volunteers right now because we're building on something else right now with the members we have now. Uh, so, but we do need to help volunteers. Volunteers are welcome. Volunteers are welcome. So they can email you at d a r r e l l Jones J o n e s. 1964 at iCloud.com or yes. you can contact myself or visit right. the website shoptalkwithmel.com. I have that information for you. Reach out. We got you or covered. Or you go on our um, internet Facebook too. Youngstown United is one. We have a Facebook page. Youngstown United is one as well. Okay, so on if you are on Facebook, Youngstown United is one and you can see the lovely people that I have on the show today. And if you don't have Facebook or are not computer savvy, is there a phone number? That they yes, can you, can call, you can call me at 330-774-4655. That's my cell phone. Anytime after 12 o'clock, I got to sleep. I, <laughs> I heard that. See? You know, they're working, working and working, yeah. working right. to give it back. How about that? That's it. That's the thing. I was just saying self-investment is the best investment. And when That's you are it. invested in your community, you can't go wrong. Because guess what? I ain't trying to get knocked over the head at 70. Yeah, so I, I appreciate your organization. <laughs> yeah, <I hope. laughs> you know, I work with recovering addicts. So okay. God placed me there because I like to encourage them women that to talk in the same place, man. Yeah, the same place. Um, I like to encourage them because they be so broken when they come in, and I tell them, just look at this as school, like you're just in school to better yourself. I say, whatever happened in the past, whatever you did, just leave it there, you know, and you know, go forward now. And they just appreciate me. And they be like, oh, Miss Tanika, oh, thank you. We appreciate you. I had one come and sit at my desk on her, on the floor right next to me and read me her story that of her life story. She never talked to anyone else, but she, she just, she's like, Tanika, it's something about you. And they would just, you know, bond with me. And I, I would like to, I just encourage them and tell them y'all queens, do your little way, you're a queen, and remember that, and, and keep yourself up, you know, forget what anybody say, people gonna talk, they talk about Jesus, right. they're gonna talk about you. How but, do you think they'll talk about Jesus, we ain't got a chance. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't take a person, we ain't got a shot, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. So I just That's encourage awesome. them to, to do better, you know, just keep focused, you know, and, you know, Working, being with Youngstown United also gave me hands on seeing how the, the need, the great need of the, for the homeless. I um, enter school, I'm in school now for, to be a social worker. So I gotta, I gotta I have to work on my speech because me, I always been really shy. So it's like, um, God is placing me where I need to, and I want to um, work with behavior children okay. because, you know, just to encourage them. All, all you have to do is encourage kids to do better and let them know that they're, they're loved and they're great and make them feel that, 
so they can believe it for themselves. That's yeah. all the social worker does. That's you know, that's well, you all know, these kids so need, you know. They, 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 don't, they don't know the importance of a hug. People don't realize as a kid, uh, the parents just a hug, the, the difference that makes. Oh, uh, a lot yes. of kids are not getting that hug from their parents. And, and you know, a hug, does, a hug boosts your immune system as well. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. So hugs are important. You are absolutely right. And, you know, you have, what is it? Children are seen and not heard, but they, they coming out. Listen, y'all gonna listen to me. They coming out different. So I That's agree true. with you. Tanika, I agree with you. Also, Daryl, it's like we reinvest, invest in your community, invest in your neighborhood, invest in, in your future, because that's what the children are, our future. Yes. yes. So yes. with that, we definitely have to do what it is we have to do. Um, and on that note, I would like to say thank you guys for coming on the show. Um, I'm going to say this again, Stop the Violence, Youngstown, Ohio, Ceasefire event rally, Saturday, April 17th, 2021, 1 to 4, Boys and Girls Club of Youngstown, and it's hosted by Youngstown United as One. We're bringing unity into the community. Who's the MC? Yeah. Who's the MC, though? I'm the MC! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 